Yay! Yay! Here is a quick example of what to do with a velocity function. Suppose we're given velocity as a function of time. Um, what can we pull out of that? It turns out there's a lot of information we can pull out of that using calculus. Uh, so let's see how that works. Um, suppose our velocity function uh, as a function of time is 3t minus 12, just for example. Um, so there's lots of things we can answer. Uh, how about this? Uh, what if I want to know what is the initial velocity? This doesn't require calculus, but... Um, What is the initial velocity of this thing? Um, well, if that's v as a function of time, then what you do is that you just put in time zero, right? Time zero is initial. So v initial is just equal to 3 times 0 minus 12 or minus 12 meters per second. Um, there we go. So what that tells you is uh, at time zero, when you start the stopwatch, this thing is moving to the left uh, at minus 12. Neat. Um, how about B? Okay, so here we have to use just a teeny tiny little bit of calculus. What is, uh, what is the acceleration? Okay, and to do this, um, remember that velocity, oops, looking for acceleration. Acceleration is defined as dv dt, right? We just take the derivative of the velocity. So what is the derivative of 3t minus 12? Uh, you can forget about the 12 because it's constant. It doesn't change. Uh, what's the derivative of 3t? Uh, 3. There we go. And notice that acceleration is constant. It doesn't depend on time. It's just a number. So this is constant. Constant acceleration. Cool. Um, all right, what's next? How about uh, c? Uh, when does it come to a stop? Uh, so we know the velocity function. Um, does this thing come to a stop at some point? We know it starts out going to the left at minus 12, right? We already did that. And it's accelerating a plus 3. So um, we're adding plus 3 to the speed every second. So you might think, uh, yeah, it will come to a stop. Um, and you can kind of do it in your head, right? If it's going at minus 12 and then you add plus 3, then after 4 seconds, it should be at 0. So let's, let's make sure. Let's make sure that's right. It sounds like it should be right. Well, what does it mean to come to a stop? Um, that would be 0. That's what it means uh, to come to a stop. So this would be 3t minus 12. Uh, so 3t equals 12 or t equals 4 seconds. Sure enough, uh, after 4 seconds, that speed v is going to be 0. Neat. Uh, so that's another thing we can pull out of this. Um, and then finally, one, one other thing that we can do is we're given velocity as a function of time. Uh, acceleration is not a function of time. It's constant. But what about the position? If we're given the speed, we're given the velocity at some time, can we figure out how far it's gone from the initial position? So what is its position uh, at some time? Um, and let's say, suppose it starts at the origin, right? Suppose x initial is zero. Okay, how do we figure that out? Well, if v, we touched on this just a little bit before, if v is, that's actually a definition, um, if v is defined as dx dt, then that means that x is the integral of v dt, right? So that means that this is going to be a v. 3t minus 12 dt. And if I integrate 3t minus 12, well, that's not too bad. 3 comes out there as the integral of t. The integral of t dt is just t squared over 2. So this is just going to be 3 halves t squared minus 12t. That's an indefinite integral. So remember, we, we have our plus c, our constant. 
but that always turns out to be just the initial position. And we said the initial position uh, is zero. So uh, I, I really don't have to worry about it. So three halves t squared minus 12t. So um, one thing we might want to know is, okay, it starts out at the origin. I mean, that's going to be its position at any time t, right? You plug in a t and it'll tell you where the thing is. One thing we might want to know is it starts out at the origin. And look, we said it's moving to the left, right, at 12. When is it back to the origin again? Uh, because it's accelerating positively. So x equals 0, 3t squared minus 12t. Um, I want to solve at what time is this thing back at the origin? Um, well, one solution to that, notice that we can factor out a t, so t could equal 0, but that's, again, sort of that's the obvious answer. At t equals zero, it's at the origin. Yeah, we already know that. That was our initial condition, right? So we want the other solution. That's a quadratic. So we want the other solution. Um, so let's factor the t out. We already know we want the one where t is not zero. So this becomes three halves t minus 12 equals zero. So let me move the 12 to the other side. So it looks like that. All right, so 3t is 24, so t is equal to 8 seconds. Cool. So after 8 seconds, this thing will be back at the origin. And just to make sure we didn't screw it up, go ahead and put 8 seconds back into here and make sure that everything is all right. Uh, 3 has, let's see, t squared of t is 8, then that would be, what, 64 divided by 2 is 24, and 72 minus 12 times 8, uh, which is... Uh, make sure that works. 64, oh, 32 times 3 is 96 minus 12 times 8, which is 96. Sure enough, zero, right? That checks out. Okay. Um, so if we know, the, the moral to this story is, if we know the velocity function, we can pull out of that um, just about anything we want to know about the motion of the particle. We, need to, we, we can take the derivative and find the acceleration. We can find out uh, what the initial is and when it does it come to a stop, what its position is at any time by integrating the function. Um, so again, just using the simple definitions, this isn't even kinematic formulas so much as just using the definitions and then applying calculus to it.